Human beings have this very special thing that they do. They normatively evaluate each other. They criticize each other by the light of certain norms. They say, you ought to be this way, you ought to be that way. It's wrong to do this, it's wrong to do that. Where does that, all that, where does that come from? Normativity has to do with not just what is, not just what has happened or will happen, but with what ought to happen, with what should happen. Normativity is all about oughts, and, and they're all over the place. There's norms about how you should behave. There's norms about what you should believe. There are norms of, uh, of artistic production. Right? So there's norms in all, all spheres of human life. My research is about trying to make all these things come together to a coherent overview, overall view of what is a human being, what is a human mind, and why does it work the way it works. I'm really not so much concerned with which are the right norms. I approach the question of where norms come from, from, well, a philosophical point of view, but also from a cognitive science point of view, a biological point of view, an evolutionary point of view. I'm more interested in why are human beings, what is it about human beings? What is it about the structure of a human mind that makes a human beings what I call, be what I call norm-mongering creatures? We create these norms, they're profuse, they're everywhere. Where do these norms come from? Why do we endorse the norms that we endorse? Why just these norms rather than some other? Is it arbitrary? Is it a product of evolution? Are they God-given? Are they the product of just sort of rational thinking so that any rational person thinking about how to behave, how to, will come up with the same, the same norms? So that's the kind of question that uh, I'm, I'm gripped by. As a philosopher, my research consists in thinking really hard about things, abstract concepts, concrete performances of various kinds. It doesn't, it doesn't consist in doing experiments, not physical experiments. I do do a lot of thought experiments, right? I like to call it uh, limning the range of the possible. I need to draw on a lot of different uh, resources. But I also think of myself as part speculative psychologist, Right? So I speculate a lot about the psychological structure of the human mind, but I don't want to just speculate. So I, I, I borrow a lot of people's experimental work, a lot of people's empirical work. I think a lot about the biology, especially evolutionary biology, in connection with evolutionary psychology. Humanistic research requires complete free play of the imagination of the mind, complete uh, a kind of no-holds-barred critical reflection on all things human and all things cultural and social, all things creative. One is just understanding this wonderful creature called the human being and how it works. And another is, I have to admit, I have an ultimate, ultimate aim to reconfigure the way we think about, the way we do the human, humanistic inquiry. I want to ground humanistic interpretation of things, human, social, cultural, in our best understanding of the deliverances of biology, psychology, cognitive science, AI, all those things. We know how to smoothly integrate what biology teaches us, what psychology teaches us, what social science teaches us, and what philosophy, and philosophy is the thing that knits them all together into a kind of coherent overall interpretation of it. So that, that you know, that's the ultimate ambition. <laughs>